Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new distro for our Raspberry Pi 4. This also works on the Pi 3, but it's recommended to use the Pi 4. This is from the same creators of Raspbian Nighthawk and iRaspbian, and this is known as Twister OS. This is available right now over on their website. Link for this is in the description. I want to give a big shout out to Grey Duck and Pi Labs for coming up with something like this. Now recently they discontinued Raspbian X and iRaspbian due to the very glaring similarities between Mac OS and Windows 10. But there's been a big demand for both of those distros, so they reimagined some of the icons and they released Twister OS. And this gives us the best of both worlds, because as the name implies, Twister OS, we can swap between Raspbian X Nighthawk, which we have running now, and the iRaspbian interface. Now in order to do this, there is an icon on the desktop that will allow you to switch and you have to do a reboot. But overall, everything's been working pretty well. And I'm going to go ahead and swap back to the Nighthawk interface and we'll take a look at this new distro. And this is it. As you can see, when you first boot this up, you're going to have a Windows 10-esque look to it. We have the little icon down here. They've swapped around a lot of the icons just to kind of bring them over to the legal side here. So everything's kind of been customized, but we still get that really awesome Windows 10 feel on your Raspberry Pi. We still have all of the amazing apps that were pre-installed with Raspbian X and iRaspbian. Plus, they've added some extras here. And one of my favorites being Commander Pi. So if we open this up, it's going to give us some information about our Raspberry Pi. And I'm running this on a 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. We have our processor details right here. Bootloader details network, and we can actually overclock directly from the app. We will have to reboot once we're done, but I am fully overclocked. I'm sitting at 2 gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU, but this is an awesome little application that allows you to easily overclock and find out all the information about your Raspberry Pi. And along with this release, we still have My Android, which will allow us to mirror our Android device directly on our Raspberry Pi screen. I'm going to go ahead and run a game real quick, just to give you an idea. Now I can control this from my phone screen, or I can control it on screen with my mouse directly on the Raspberry Pi 4 screen. And it seems to work really well. The resolution is definitely downscaled, but it works, and I've actually been able to play some higher-end games using this method here. But I think the best use case scenario for something like this is just to mirror your phone screen so you don't miss any calls or anything like that. You can actually answer from right here. Unfortunately, it still does not support audio, but you can hear everything coming from your phone speaker. So if you're sitting in the same room, there should be no problem at all. We still have RetroPie pre-installed. Keep in mind that Emulation Station seems a bit slow when it's running like this, but once you get into emulation, everything's fine. It functions just like regular old RetroPie on your Raspberry Pi 4. Steam is still pre-installed, and keep in mind, this is a very experimental little build here. There are a few 2D games that'll work right with Box86 that's built into this, but your 3D games aren't going to be running on your Raspberry Pi 4. Most importantly, the README on the desktop. If you install this, make sure this is the first thing you click on and read through it. There's some acknowledgments, it explains a few issues, and some other stuff you need to know while you're running this operating system. And just like the other releases of iRaspian and Nighthawk, we still have the media edition of Chromium. So this is the regular old web browser, and if you're going to be just checking emails and things like that, use this one. But if you want to view any DRM content like Hulu, Netflix, or Disney+, Plus, make sure you head to the media edition of Chromium. We're going to launch this real quick. And I'll just head over to Netflix. And we'll start something here. I'll just go with the universe. First time in recorded history, it's definitely coming. So as you can see, fast. we get that DRM content on a Raspberry Pi 4. We can go full screen with it. It's definitely not HDR or 4K, but it does work well for a little single board computer. And this will get you by viewing your favorite movies on Netflix and apps like that. When those didn't deploy. All right, so now it's time to swap over to the iRaspbian look. On your desktop, you'll have a little icon here. This will allow us to switch to the iRaspbian theme. And when you're running iRaspbian, it'll give us a vice versa icon to come back to this Nighthawk with a Raspbian X look. 
So we'll just click on it. It's going to bring up terminal. We want to confirm. We'll press enter and we do have to reboot. So when I press enter again, it's going to reboot my system. Like all of their releases, the default password is Raspberry, but inside of the README on the desktop, it tells you exactly how to change that. And I do urge you to change your password to something that you're going to remember. And now we're running that awesome OSX theme. Down here, you can see we have our little app bar. Everything works pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and load up GIMP. This is GIMP reloaded. We have a full image editor built in. And over here, it changes the icons. So this would normally be numbers in OSX. It has the full LibreSuite built in. The app launcher is still here. And there's still an issue. If the app runs in terminal, it will not launch from this launcher here, or Sling's Cold Launcher is what it's called. But if it's just a normal app that doesn't run in terminal, like let's say a game, you can launch it directly from here. And there's a few pre-installed games here. So this is Cursed Castle. And it's highly recommended to run these games at 720p. They will work at 1080p, but they're a bit slow. Keep in mind, this is using Box86 for games like this. These were originally designed for an x86 CPU. And I do have an Xbox One controller plugged in here. All the games that I've tested so far do work with a controller or you can use your keyboard. At 720p, performance on these is absolutely amazing. And by the way, if you do need to change the resolution, it's super easy to do. If you're on the iRaspian side, you're going to go to the little bit and apple up here, settings, display, and you can change it right here. If you're using the Raspbian X side, you can just go to the little icon in the bottom left hand corner, find settings and display from there. So it's super easy to change your resolution. So yeah, I really love the fact that they've combined these two operating systems because basically the only thing that was really changed between the two was the interface. Personally, I'm partial to the iRaspian look. I just think it's super clean. But if you're into that Nighthawk or the Raspbian X look, you can swap out super easy. There's one last application I'd like to show you, and it brings back a lot of memories for me. If we go to games here, we have ZSNES. And this is actually the very first emulator that I ever used. My brother had a PC when I was about 12 or 13 years old. He showed me how to set it up, and I spent hours playing my favorite SNES games. This was not designed to run on ARM CPUs like the Raspberry Pi has. This is using Box86. This is an x86 app. This is one of my favorite emulators of all time. And I'm just going to go full screen with it. I'm going to load up one game here. And I got to find my directory. I just put a few in a ROMs folder. And we'll test Hagani. I have an Xbox One controller plugged in with USB. So yeah, there are better emulators out there. I would use RetroPie with SNES 9X, but this just brings back a lot of memories for me. Got some screen tearing going on, and I'm pretty sure I had that back in the day also. Overall, I mean, performance is pretty good here. We just have that screen tearing going on. It's just really cool to see this old x86 application running on a Raspberry Pi. And like I mentioned, this was the very first emulator I ever used, so it definitely brings back some memories. Before I wrap this video up, I just want to show you how to get a little performance boost out of it. Now you can run this non-overclocked if you want to. Personally, I recommend to overclock it and the devs do just to get a better experience. Down here, you can see we have our CPU set to on demand. But if we open up our little app launcher here and type in performance or PER, you can see here, it's now set to performance. And I'm running this at two gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte with the low profile ice tower cooler. There's a lot of great stuff to mess around with in here. If we head over here to all, you can see just what's installed. I mean, there's lots of stuff installed in here. And basically everything you'll need for a full operating system is already here in Twister OS. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I do want to give a big shout out to Pi Labs and Gray Duck for coming through once again. This is awesome to see them come back to the scene with Twister OS. And I love the idea that we can swap between the Raspbian X look and the iRaspbian look. So you really get the best of both worlds here. 
Don't forget to check out Pi Lab's YouTube channel. Link for that is in the description. He also has a Discord, and the link to download this is in the description. Let me know in the comments below if you need an install tutorial. I mean, it's really easy to do. You can use Etcher or the Pi Imager after you download it, flash to an SD card. It's actually really simple, but some people might need a little help, and I can do a video if enough people are interested. But like always, thanks for watching.